Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about the calendar service that's built into macOS Server. Now, the beauty of hosting a server, again, is the ability to host many of the services that you might get through iCloud or any of your Google accounts. And the benefit is, is that you can host them on your own server so they're private, so that they're only available to you and anyone you give access to them. But they don't live anywhere in a cloud. They just live on your own local server. And so for those of you that have privacy concerns about calendars or maybe contacts, maybe because of the line of work you do, uh, this gives you the opportunity to set up those particular services. So let's go ahead and take a look at the calendar service. Let's look at all the different setup options, and I'll show you how to make this work. Uh, you can see here on the calendar server, the status is it's offline right now. And like we have in all of our services, we have this uh, permissions area, as I show you every time. We can edit permissions for all users or only some users, and for all networks, private networks, or only some networks. Again, this is our firewall uh, that we're telling what type of access uh, people should have to the calendar. And so if you really want to lock it down, you can lock it down to specific users, and only those specific users would have access to it. Now, of course, they would still need usernames and passwords, so it's still pretty secure, but uh, that's just one way you can do it. I'll go ahead and say cancel here. Now, we have this option right here to enable invitations by email. Now, I'm going to show you what this looks like, uh, but the important thing to understand is that you need to have the mail service running for this to happen because it needs a dedicated email account in order for the email invitations by, uh, the invitations by email to work. So let's go ahead and just click on that. It's going to create mail services. It's reading my calendar settings here. And then that's what it tells us, right, that we need a dedicated email address. What it's done is by default it's set up an email address at the calendar server uh, account. So this is like a user account that is there. It's, a, it's one of the uh, system accounts uh, that could show up in your users area. And uh, then it's at my server. I'm just going to go ahead and click on next so you can see what happens. So it'll have you set up the uh, mail server uh, type. So it's IMAP. What is the incoming mail server? And I'm going to show you what it looks like to set up mail. Uh, but it would generally probably be mail at your uh, domain.com, mail.example.com. Uh, you have the port that you use there, the username and password. Uh, that it's giving it, and so it's giving it this generic one. If I say next, now it's going to do the outgoing mail server um, and have that set up with uh, using SSL. Again, your outgoing mail server will probably match. It would be mail.example.com. And if I say next here, then it says, hey, this is what I'm going to set up. I'm going to set up all of these things so that we're ready to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I don't want to set that up because I don't have that all set. So I'm just going to say cancel. If you want to get an idea of how it used that uh, com.apple user account, let me just show you how to get to that. If I come up here to users, and then if I just go up here to view, you'll see where it says show system accounts. If I just click on that, you'll notice all of a sudden all these system accounts that are operating in the background show up. And you can see right here I've got one for calendar server. And if I just double click on this for calendar server, It'll bring up the user, and there's my com.apple.calendar server. And this is where that email address would get added in here. You can see it's just a login for services only, but that's where that uh, actual email address and account would be. It'd be under this uh, these hidden users. I'm just going to say cancel. So if you ever get stuck with a bunch of these things showing up that you don't know what in the world those are, uh, if you just come up to the View menu and you can say Hide System Accounts, you'll be right back to your regular network and local user accounts that were there. So let's go ahead and go back into calendar here. Uh, so I'm going to leave that off for right now because I don't have the mail service set up. Uh, but right here I've got push notifications enabled. And again, I showed you in the screencast we did on contacts how to set up those push notifications. And what this is going to do is enable all of my changes to automatically be pushed to my devices as I add calendar events and that sort of thing. It'll be pushed to the devices and to the server at the same time. And so it'll be almost uh, instantaneous or, or really quick in terms of getting there because it's automatically going to push those. Now, one more thing that we've got here in the configuration is we've got locations and resources. And if I just hit the plus here, you'll see that I've got the option of adding either a location or a resource. Now, a location would be something like a room, uh, maybe an office location. Uh, it might be a, uh, you know, a, an office or a room or a space if you're doing it in your home. And then a resource would be anything that you would want to have someone check out, like maybe a projector or if they were checking out 
uh, you know, a computer or some other type of resource, you could set it up that way. So let me show you what that looks like. So for my house, let's just say I'm going to say the living room here. And uh, that I could put an address in if I wanted to do that. If I just put, you know, 999, you know, and you can see it starts to look up the actual addresses. So you can put in an actual address uh, for different locations uh, that are there. I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. But I just wanted to show that that's absolutely automatic. And you can also choose a delegate. So if I put, you know, like John Doe in here, you'll see it'll find John Doe, and I can have John Doe be the delegate, and he then would be the one that would, if I selected him, he'd be the one that manages the resources um, using the calendar. So he's the one that would approve or, or disapprove those sorts of things. And so in this case, I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to uh, take him out there. Now on scheduling, I can say automatically accept if free or decline if busy or I can choose whatever I want here. I can accept all invitations, accept invitations if free, accept if free, decline if busy, require delegate approval, and that would mean that you can't check out the actual item or sign up for the room unless the delegate approves of it. I can decline, decline invitations if busy or decline all invitations. So I've got that option right there uh, to set up how it's handled and if it's handled by a delegate or not. And then I can put uh, invitations from members of this particular group will always be accepted. So I could put in a group here, like for instance we have a work group, and you can see there's my work group, and so I could choose an actual uh, account that would automatically accept all services. So they've given us a little bit more that we can do to moderate these different locations and items if we want to have uh, more of an approval process. I'm going to go ahead and just back all of this out for now and just kind of leave it alone as it's set up. I just want to show that you could put all that in there. If I just say create for the living room, you can see now I've got a location here for living room. Let me do one more thing here. Let's go ahead and show you what a resource looks like. If I go to the resource, then this changes a little bit. I lose the address, but I've got everything else, and I can name the resource. So in my home, I'm going to call it Xbox because we've got an Xbox in the home, and maybe I want to have all of all of uh, you know the family check out the Xbox instead of just using it whenever they want. So I'm going to say create there. And so I've created a, the living room as a location and the Xbox. If I ever want to edit them, I can either double click on them or hit this pencil and it'll take me back in here so that I can come and edit the different settings that I've got on it. So it is pretty nice. I mean, it does give you a, a few different things you can do with this. So now that I've got my basics set up the way I want them, I'm going to go ahead and throw the switch to turn on the service. And you can see that the service is starting right now. And the green light is on over here. We just need to see that service uh, show up right here, that it's available and ready to go. And what it's doing is it's loading just all the components that are needed for the calendar service to be in working order. And so there you go. You can see that now it's available. And the reason it says available on my local network right now is because I haven't opened the ports on my router yet. And so I will list the, uh, the ports for you that you need to open for the calendar service to work. You need to do the same for all of these different services by making sure those are open. Because I had switched my router out, I'm not using an Apple router right now. And so that's not visible over here. If you have an Apple router that is working with your server, it will automatically open those ports for you. So that's a, a nice uh, option for you. So now that I've got this up and running, what I'm going to do is go over to a screen share and show you how to install the server calendar on one of your Macs. Okay, so here we are over on a screen share of my MacBook Pro, and I'm back into the Internet Accounts area that we've got in System Preferences, and I showed you in the Contacts set up how to set up the server account so if you haven't seen that you may want to go back and just take a look at it but what I want you to notice is when I set it up under contacts before I only had contacts and VPN available now all of a sudden I've got calendars and reminders available and that's because once you start adding services to your server then they automatically become available here and all I need to do to add those services now is just to check the little box right next to it and you can see it's added the word calendars here, and now calendars has been added. Now, because calendars have reminders, you can actually check the reminders as well, and it will add your uh, Mac OS server calendar reminders to the reminders app as well if you want to set that up that way. I'm just going to leave it like this for now, but I wanted to show you how that works. So let me pull up the calendars application here on my remote machine. I'm just going to pop that up here for a second. And you notice right away I've got my Mac OS server calendar sitting right here functioning just like a regular calendar. Now let me show you what it looks like to add a particular event. So I'm just going to add an event here, uh, double click on that, and I'm just going to call this, uh, you know, play Xbox, let's say. 
So I've got that there. I can add a location. So I'm going to type, start typing in uh, living room. And notice that it reads the living room from the server. So if I just click on that, there's my, there's my living room. And I can copy the location, remove the location, that information, but I've got that right there. Okay, so another thing I can do is put in the date and information in here. And then I've got this add invitees area. Now in this area right here is where I would not only add uh, people that I would invite, but I would also add devices. So for instance, I'm going to type in the Xbox here. And you can see there my Xbox shows up. And if I just click on that, you see I've added the Xbox now. And again, just like with Living Room, I can remove the resource or invite again. And so it handles these devices in rooms like invites. Okay. Now the other thing down here is I can add other attendees. So I'm going to add my test account here. And you'll see that test shows up. Now it's very important to understand that you can't in add invitees if they don't have an actual email address. If they've got an email address uh, that's working with the server, that's great. If not, you won't be able to add them. So I'm going to go ahead and just add this guy in here. And so now he's added to the actual account. And the same kinds of things. I can come in here and remove him or send the invite again and that sort of thing. Now the other thing I can do is once I've added these is I can check availability. And so now I've got all of these different people I can check their availability. And if for instance it was booked at the time I wanted it, I could just say next available time and it would skip to what that time was. Uh, but it's nice that it has this built in so that I can check it out. I'm going to go ahead and close that because everything's fine. And I'm just going to say send right now. Uh, I can add notes and all that. And so I'll say send. Now once I've done that, you see I get this little icon here. It's going to actually send those invites. And those invites are going to come back and tell me whether they're approved or not approved. And so if I just double click on this to take a look, you can see uh, when I pull this up, these little check marks here, once those invites are sent, will uh, will come back once they're accepted and they will turn green and then that's how I'll know that everything's there. And you can see that the living room's turned green and so has the Xbox. They've both accepted the event because we are they already know that they're available for that time frame. And then when test uh, gets back to me as a user, then his would turn green as well once he accepted the uh, particular invite. So that gives you an idea of how the calendar service works. Again, it's, uh, it's a nice service to have here uh, on uh, Mac OS server, and it's a way for you to have your own private calendaring service. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.